All right, thank you everyone for joining today. My name is Kristen Eileen Brand. I'm the VP of Business Development uh, for Online Rewards. We're very happy to have you join How to Increase Employee Engagement Without Increasing Spend. This webinar is brought to you by Online Rewards and Nelson Motivation. Uh, we have over 200 uh, participants scheduled to join today, so we're very happy to have you join. And trying to go through the slides, um, I'd like to give you uh, an overview of the agenda. We will be talking about uh, the power of recognition and traditional recognition. Bob Nelson will be speaking to those topics. And we will also have Michael Levy uh, speaking to Recognition 2016, more modern uh, focused recognition, as well as how to align with your corporate objectives. And then we'll open it up for questions and answers. On the right hand side, you'll see a uh, green dollar sign symbol. Wherever you see that symbol, that is an area that we've identified that can help your company uh, save money and provide cost savings in regards to implementing a recognition program. We hope you enjoy this uh, seminar. The two speakers today that we have are Michael Levy and Bob Nelson. Michael Levy is the CEO of Online Rewards. He has worked with recognition programs and designing recognition programs uh, for over 20 years, and he has worked with over 400 different companies. He has been featured on a variety of different uh, publications and uh, news organizations, including CNBC and Inc. 5000. In fact, Online Rewards has been one of the fastest growing companies as identified by the Inc. 5000 for over eight years. We also have Dr. Bob Nelson speaking. He is one of the world's leading experts on employee engagement and recognition. He's written many books uh, with over 4 million copies so sold. In fact, today, uh, as part of attending this webinar, you will be receiving Recognizing and Engaging Employees for Dummies. Uh, this book helps you uh, use rec employee recognition to drive results and bring your employee engagement to new levels in your organization. And we will be shipping these books out to you within the next few weeks. Uh, additionally, uh, Bob Nelson has appeared on many different national media organizations to discuss uh, motivating employees, uh, PBS, MSNBC, 60 Minutes, etc. And we are very, very happy to have him here today to present. And Bob, I'd like to hand it over to you. Well, thank you so much, Kristen and Michael. Uh, good to chat with you again. Um, the, I'm very excited about this topic. I'm very excited about uh, my new book. You know, writing a book is like birthing a child. Uh, that, that's a lot of work, and eventually it's done. And I'm very proud of uh, how it came out. That that the overall uh, the topic of engagement has been out there for 15, 20 years, um, and yet I find it very strange that the same amount of employees right now are actively engaged as were 20 years ago. It kind of makes you wonder, are we doing the wrong things to try to fix recognition, try to fix engagement rather? And uh, I've, I have seen that that is actually pretty much the case. And as I looked at, at research, and we could go into some of it, that um, companies are groping with how to increase engagement, starting with the, the Gallup Q12 and, and other uh, HR consulting models, it's all being driven off surveys and and the elements of that, but there's not a lot of help in once you have the information how to make changes in your organization that can actually lead to higher engagement. Uh, and so I was very delighted uh, to come across uh, research from multiple sources now, including the Harvard Business Review and the Ab Aberdeen Group has done a lot of great work on finding that the, the most powerful way to actually, if you do anything right to impact engagement, it's got to start with recognition. A philosophy, a program, a system, uh, active executive involvement, participation by all management, helping lead the charge. Do that well and engagement will follow. So the power of of uh, recognition is critical to a high engagement culture. 
and and with that in mind, we we have a couple polls in our brief time together. The the first is uh, right now. Uh, we wanted to ask where are your current challenges with your company's role in in uh, rewards and recognition efforts. So if you would uh, click on uh, one of these, and we'll see uh, choices again. Programs have become stale and and have diminishing returns, or maybe you don't even know what the returns are. Uh, recognition efforts are diffused, uncoordinated, everyone's doing their own thing, we don't, we're not even sure what people are doing, management does not actively participate in reward and recognition efforts, um, the administrative burden for the, whatever you're doing has is great and uh, continues or, or other reasons. Take a moment and just uh, click on one of those. I, I'm not I'm not sure uh if if you can click multiple ones or not. Um, if you can, whichever ones that apply. And Jim Jim is helping us with the webinar today. What uh what uh how are those results looking? Sure, it looks like uh seventy nine percent of people have voted um right now. Uh thirty percent are saying that management does not actively participate. Okay, uh, and that's actually uh, a uh, a huge huge one actually from uh, oh, oh good so here thank you for bringing that up uh, the largest being management does not actually participate which actually is ironic because that was the number one finding from my doctoral work on this topic where I asked a very simple question why is it some managers use recognition uh, and others don't. Because we know it, we know it works, and and the top reason was that managers didn't didn't uh, they had a blind spot. They they didn't really believe the power. They didn't know quite how to do it. They didn't know how to do it well, um, et cetera. So that's that uh, is confirming for what I've seen. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna touch on all those issues in our brief time here. So let me uh, dig right in here with. Next slide. Good. So recognition, <laughs> recognition uh, defined very simply as acknowledging and appreciating people for their achievements. Uh, as simple as this is, there's, uh, I want to point out that it doesn't say acknowledging and appreciating people for showing up to work. Recognition isn't just about showing up. So uh, this is one of the uh, one of the deviations that occurs in organizations. If you've been doing recognition for a long time, chances are that you're probably doing it more around presence than performance. Uh, years of service, uh, summer picnics, birthday parties, etc. And so I find uh, there's a lot of uh, baggage on this topic in organizations that people think they're going through the motions and actually what they're doing is not uh, current or relevant to today's employees and, and driving their, their behavior performance. So, um, but basically the, it's a contingent uh, action. It's something that's done in acknowledgement of when someone has done desired behavior or results that you you want more of. Anything that gets rewarded gets reinforced for that person, for anyone else that notices, hears, or or sees firsthand that that was done. So again, uh, I find part of the challenge of this topic is that because it's simple, uh, it that actually becomes a problem because people, uh, everyone know, has heard of recognition. They uh, Yet they, what what is simple and what is uh, common sense rather, and what is common practice are are often not the same thing. And this is a, a perfect case of that. We know recognition is important, but for most managers, they're not actively doing the things on a daily basis that are uh, that their employees consider recognition. Uh, so, um, in my in my research, it's almost universal that employees want recognition. Uh, they they. Uh, 99.4% of employees expect to be recognized when they do good work, and that and that word "expect" there is is new. Uh, a decade or, or so ago, um, employees would say, "Yeah, it'd be nice if I got recognized," but increasingly today, employees expect it to happen. The younger generation expects it to happen, and for them, uh, millennials expect it to happen on a on a daily basis. So the the, the importance of this topic is shifting. Um, with the issues of the day and with the populations of today. Now, although it's almost universal then that uh, people want this, actually the amount that they're getting it is 
substantially less. Only 12% of employees say they feel recognized in important ways. In fact, three times as many, 34% say that the recognition they get where they work is not meaningful, does not speak to them, is not relevant. And maybe it's, it's, still, it's a joke even, uh, is often the case. So if you, if you don't know that, it's hard to uh, deal with it. Uh, and, and once you know, 80% of managers feel that they're actually pretty good at this and they're doing it all the time. So we have this, this major disconnect on this topic that, that surprises me how, how it has sustained over time that um, we need to, the starting point is to, is to narrow this gap to, to get more informed about what is important to your people and to systematically look to do those things as they perform, uh, desired behaviors, core values, uh, results, performance that makes a difference to their success and that of the organization. So the value of, of recognition, should you choose to take this topic more seriously, uh, is, is substantial. For um, in, in recent research, your employees, if you have a culture of recognition, will, will report being five times more likely to feel valued. They will be um, six times more likely to strongly endorse the company, the organization is a great place to work. They will be seven times more likely to stay with the company. And here's one of our first dollar signs. And uh, there's a, a lot of evidence in, in, in terms of speaking to retention that if people stay longer, it's going to save the company money. Um, not even looking at uh, someone leaves, the cost of replacing them. Uh, National SHRM um, estimates that to be 1.5% of, uh, of their annual salary. Uh, depending on the level, it's going to vary, of course. But um, the longer someone stays, the, the less cost you have in buying the replacement. Not even looking at the fact that a lot of information uh, went out the door in terms of knowledge of our procedures and clients and that type of thing. Just physically finding a person to replace that person, training them, getting them up to speed, which might take three, six months, is a huge drain on, on cost in any organization. And and finally here, uh, the the fact that 11 times, there we go, 11, that employees are 11 times more likely to feel completely committed to their jobs in the culture of recognition. 11 times. Now, commitment, this isn't uh, committed to a mental, mental institution. It's committed to doing the job right, going above and beyond until it's done right. Uh, doing things without being asked to, using your discretionary energy. This is the essence of, of engagement. And again, this uh, this has uh, been validated in, in research by, <laughs> or excuse me, I'm having some trouble with the, the slide advance. Um, Towers Watson, in their engagement research, has found that committed employees deliver 57% more effort than uncommitted ones. Gallup in their uh, research has indicated 55% more effort, more discretionary energy, et cetera, uh, more creativity, more resourcefulness, more teamwork, et cetera. And it's like this really translates that for every dollar you spend on your people in your organization, you get a dollar 57% return. So again, it has a it has a significant impact financially um, in aggregate uh, as we have a, a greater uh, engagement going on and and that that is why this topic has become so important because of the the potential it has in, in helping companies be more efficient and and more profitable a, a workplace strategy that combines uh, employee engagement includes alignment with the organizations uh, between the organization and the employees purpose and values it includes Having uh, Jim, you might have to help me advance. This is kind of uh, I've got a stutter step. Uh, clear goals and adequate tools for employees to do their jobs well. And the third element of engagement speaks to the ability for employees to develop, <laughs> grow, and enhance their their prospects. So there's, in, in a nutshell, it's this alignment. So that so that people are on board, are are uh, their individual efforts are driven by the organization's vision and purpose, 
uh, you're more effective in, in those things that your that employees are set up to do that well and as they do it they also have personal gains in their own development and their ability to enhance your prospects ideally in the organization but uh, in their in their life and their career so it's it's uh, in a nutshell this is how employee engagement is defined today engaged employees uh, according to Gallup are uh, with the extensive longitudinal uh, studies that that initially started with about two million employees and and has since uh, increased uh, 25 million worldwide employees and they have they've tracked the impact of engagement in organizations that again em employees that are engaged are 18 percent more productive 12 percent uh, more profitable for the organization they're 27 percent less prone to absenteeism and 54 percent less likely to leave their jobs uh, again, each of these have a financial impact to the organization as we have uh, more more engaged employees. More specifically, <laughs> taking it specifically to the bottom line, operating income. Uh, again, from Gallup, they've they've shown that as they spread out organizations over uh, the engagement measure, uh, the the top quartile is 19% uh, more profitable uh, as an organization. Uh, those that uh, report the lowest quartile of engagement, 30% uh, less profitable. Um, so again, their their efforts to tie this back to the the bottom the bottom line. Uh, and this this again, just uh, the the topic of engagement uh, is increasingly strategic of importance to organizations. To make that happen, the number one best in class strategy for improving employee engagement as I indicated earlier, is a strategic integrated employee recognition reward program. This has been validated in, in several sources. Uh, the one I, I particularly like is Aberdeen Group's uh, research where they have dug into this issue deeply and, and find that uh, if you just do one thing well, let it be this topic. Uh, get it together, uh, systematically do it, get your, lead, your leaders to do it, from top leaders to every individual manager, owning the topic and doing it in their sphere of influence and you will see the results. You will see engagement increase in your organization. In fact, anything that you recognize uh, does get repeated again by the person who's recognized or others that, that see or notice notice that. Um, so it's a, enormously, it's actually the most powerful in my, in my experience, in my research, the most powerful uh, management principle uh, known to exist to mankind. So uh, we've got to take it more seriously in organizations today. There's been great progress, but uh, more progress can be made. So most organizations have started with a, a traditional approach to recognition. This actually dates depending on the organization and how old it is. In fact, the older the organization, the more likely they have uh, old line approach to the topic. Um, whereas younger organizations um, are, are less encumbered by um, past A practices, but but typically uh, traditional approach to recognition has been things like <clears throat> things like this: years of service. Ninety-two percent of organizations have years of service awards. Personally, I haven't um, ever met an employee that stayed a day longer in their job to get their ten-year pin, um, but uh, companies spend millions of dollars on this. So this, uh, and, and then, and then once you start doing that, the question on any given year is, uh, do we spend 10% more or 10% less? No one, no one really, very few companies ask the question, is this working at all? Does this matter at all? Is this just a nice thing to do? Are we doing it because we've always done it? Are we doing it because employees expect it? Is this helping us be more successful, uh, more productive? Uh, ha helping achieve our vision and mission and those are the questions that we have to ask now and, and based on that uh, companies are starting to move away from just uh, a focus on, on these type of things thank God uh, so you, you look at uh, Medtronic in Minneapolis they they said well what, let's ask employees what they want when you when you've been here 10 years you know we're, right now we're giving you a clock with our, our name on it and Maybe a choice of something else is, is that what you want or would you like something else? And well, once you know, it came back and they said, well, they'd rather have something else. Well, what was that? Well, they'd rather have more vacation time. 
so they moved to that. And they did it, they transitioned to that for a few years. They, they gave people a choice, and then after a number, of time, a number of years, they said, okay, we're not doing the clocks anymore. We're not doing the, the merchandise out of the catalog. We're overwhelmingly people wanted, uh, they said what they wanted, that's what we're going to give them. And that's what they did. And so, and, and other, other companies have transitioned uh, to, to make it maybe, even if they keep years of service, to make it more meaningful. Uh, so it's not just uh, uh, that this is more significant to employees. Employee of the month, again, is, is one of those things that sounds, well, that's got to be performance-based, right? You're picking the best employee. And, and yes, it is. The, the first person you pick, and there's a lot of buzz and excitement. But what happens, whether it's two months or two years later, is there's a group sitting around a conference table, and somebody goes, hey, it's time to do employee of the month. Oh, we just did that. Well, another month went by. Well, okay, what about uh, Betty at the front desk? She's so great with our clients. She got it in January. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You can only be excellent once in this organization. So once you got it, you can't get it again. Now, increasingly, you're moving towards a, a smaller and smaller population of people that aren't employees of the month. And, and what, what about Fred and shipping? Well, does he deserve it? Who cares? We're going to be here all day. We've got to move on. So you pick Fred. What does Fred say? I knew if I stuck around here long enough, someone would notice me. You've turned the thing into uh, an endurance award. This is the, the sad truth of a lot of these type of programs. Holiday parties, summer picnics might, uh, again, might sound nice, uh, a great uh, team-based thing, but, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, spouses don't want to go to a holiday party. Oh, we went last year. Remember that guy got drunk and pulled off the CEO? Oh, it was ugly, you know, or trying to drag the family to the summer picnic. Don't, don't assume you know what motivates your people. Don't do it because we've always done it or somewhere previously where we worked we used to do that. Let's try that here. Just start by asking your employees what do they value and, and be receptive to that and then prioritize those and, okay, we'll do some of these things. Again, not to be nice, not uh, as, but because uh, when you do the performance, that's going to enable us to do it. Uh, birthdays. I, personally, I don't, I don't really like uh, sharing my birthday publicly. It's a private thing with family. It's more personal. The, so the idea that you buy a cake and have it in the meeting room on the second Tuesday of the month for everyone that has a birthday that month really doesn't make a lot of sense. It's in uh, retirement parties, uh, et cetera. These, these are all, all passe. If you're, if you're spending money on these things, there's a great probability that money can and should be redeployed for things that are more effective to actually helping with your mission and, mission and vision. Until I got some energy on that topic. So when you go to realign your recognition focus, things that are more meaningful, uh, there's um, basically I'm talking about going from presence to performance. Of course, if we can drive performance, that's going to have a financial impact, of course. Uh, regardless of how you, you measure that, innovation, client referrals, uh, em employee referrals, each of those has a, a way to make the organization more effective, more efficient. From a disjointed uh, to consolidated focus on this topic, a lot of organizations, they, things are done at the local department level. And for and that corporate, they don't really can't get their arms around what's all done. It comes out of a lot of different budgets. And so there's not a unified uh, vision and driving a certain type of performance and strategic objectives. There's, there's actually a lot of waste in, in, uh, in different spending that hasn't been consolidated and, and, again, doing things that may not be of value to employees. Uh, the uh, administrative burden, which uh, again grows over time if you've got one or a few people doing this and all of a sudden they're spending half their time trying to organize the, uh, the lunch for the, for the tenure uh, people and, and who's coming and, and what they want. And all of a sudden it, it takes on a lot of effort trying to manually do reports, you know, and, and uh, instead of leveraging technology and doing those things that can have the uh, electronically be done more effective than uh, manually created um, is, is another huge one. Okay. <laughs> um, measurement, having no measurement and tracking. I've worked with uh, over a thousand organizations, and many of them, they, well, people do different things. I have no idea what they're doing. Certainly, we don't know who's not doing it. We don't know who's doing it well. To systematically measuring and tracking that. My, my professor, uh, Dr. Peter Drucker, used to say, if you can't measure it, you can't management. And, and that's just dead on. If you don't know what you're doing on this topic, and it's all over the map, 
it's hard to, to harness it and drive the power that you could have than if you could uh, more accurately measure what's what's happening. And and finally here, from going from a one size fits all, just plop one thing on the organization and hope that's going to work for everybody. Again, years of service or or a holiday party, whatever that might be, um, to something that's more customizable for employees where they've got a choice. So one way to increase motivation instead of saying, okay, you get just at any level, you get this one, you get this clock, you know, at 10 years, and you get something else at 15 years. Just if you gave people a, a choice at that point, they might get something for their kids, they might get something that that uh, has the company logo, they might get something that doesn't have the company logo. As you allow choice in every instance, you will increase motivation. But going beyond that today, uh, to to allow uh, people to choose things that aren't just merchandise but maybe are uh, include activities or experiences that uh, that maybe include development options um, even even uh, things that they can purchase for to better do their job uh, or to gain education that makes them better in their job this is the the new frontier on on recognition to for organizations to open up to really really get behind the things that uh, employees most value uh, top of the list, uh, I said for engagement is is recognition, but right behind it, number two in, in studies of from all all companies is career development, uh, allowing people to invest in themselves um, uh, to uh, make them more effective in their current job, but to help prepare them for future growth and more responsibility uh, is uh, can be achieved through a, a, an effective and and vital recognition program. So that's uh, kind of the state of things and the, the point that we've come to. And at this point, I want to kind of turn it over to Michael. And good luck with the, the slides there, Michael. They're kind of uh, choppy here for me. But uh, in terms of what what are what do you see the, the, the current application of what people are are doing with this topic? Thanks, Bob, for the uh, introduction. I'll do my best with the slides. Thanks everybody for joining and being available. Uh, Hopefully we're going to have some additional <laughs> doodles talking to me as well. Uh, I'm going to share some of what we've seen and uh, observed in the uh, industry. We have the benefit of being uh, at the forefront, when I say we as Online Rewards, a software technology company, at the forefront of innovative clients looking to try and break the mold of the traditional uh, recognition programs which were relevant in you know parent generations again is there anything wrong with what has historically been done no there's never anything wrong with looking backwards because in history we all do the best that we can with the circumstances whether those be financial cultural or otherwise that we operated within you know, a generation ago, telephones and fax machines were fundamental and centerpieces to our communications infrastructure and a driver of industrial growth in the United States. Now, we would be shocked if anybody ever used a fax. And if any of you have children, they don't want you talking to them. They want you texting them. So, again, there was nothing wrong with the generational situation or the programs that were created at the time. What most companies find is there's these legacy programs, numbers of them more often than not, uh, inside uh, their uh, organizations for which more often than not, you as HR uh, leaders didn't really have much to do with creating, but here they are on your desk as one of the agenda items and things you need to look after and you scratch your head saying, what am I going to do with these things? So I'm going to share with you uh, some examples of clients who in similar situations have taken it upon themselves to say, I'm not accepting just because they're there. I've decided that uh, recognition is important and that we all on this call work for more things than just payroll. So these HR leaders have come to us and said, you know, well, have a look, this is what we're doing, you know, what are the other options, what are the best practices? So I'll share some examples. 
So in the spirit, we're going to do firstly a little poll, get some information saying, okay, you know, we won't just talk for forever. We'll say, well, look, what do you want to do next year? What, what from this uh, audience are they thinking about that might set a nice segue and scene for some of the, you know, examples of work that we've done? So we'll spend a minute or two uh, while you uh, fill out these responses. Jim will tell us once we've got some initial, uh, you know, reference point just for each and everybody to see, okay, is everybody sharing some uh, common experiences and pain points uh, you know, in terms of, uh, of this area? So, Michael, as this compares to the previous poll, the previous poll was looking at current state. This is really looking at looking to the future. What would you most like to improve? Looks like about 60% of people have voted so far are uh, selected in answer. Um, looks like 40% are saying um, get management to more frequent, frequently use rewards and recognition. All right. So let's All right, we're at 83%. Uh, I'll, I'll close the poll and share the results. All right, so Jim, thanks for putting that together. So the priorities, common theme, so I'll discuss and show in the right example of how we can either directly or indirectly get management to uh, more frequently uh, engage in the process of recognizing. Secondly, I think it's great that people are uh, identifying that there's nothing wrong with uh, in a recognition for the sake of it. And that's a context uh, of creating culture and a tapestry of the feel of working in an organization. But if we can make it more about performance, then to quote famous Bob Nelson, don't know if he quoted on this one, we want to recognize people for a behavior that we want them to do again. For if they're recognized for those behaviors, then they're likely to do those again. Then we should make sure that those behaviors are those that align with the objectives of the organization. Uh, definition of performance, well, that depends on everybody's circumstance. I want them safer. I want them healthier. I want them there more frequently. I want them there on time. I want them working harder. I want them more engaged. I want them less distracted. Two very direct ones. I want them to increase revenue. I want them to increase customer satisfaction scores, etc. All right, so pass back control to me. I don't know if I need to do something specifically, Bob, for, uh, Jim, for that. All right, so what are we seeing out there and how does that speak to some of these uh, topics? All right, what we're seeing in the focus today, focus being what are most of the uh, clients coming and talking about perspective or otherwise engagement having become a buzzword. What does it really mean? It means that people are doing the best that they can within the capacity that they individually have as an employee to help achieve and drive business outcomes for the organization. And so we call that engagement. Okay. Make things performance driven. Right? Again, saying that we need to transition from traditional recognition that was for the sake of it into things that relate. Get the leadership involved, CXO supported. Let's align this to culture and to the values. The culture and values have become important buzzwords. Say what makes it different to work for this particular company? Or how do we make a recognition program support that? Many of them, many of them, them being clients looking and saying, you know, we got, we got a years of service thing by one group managed by this vendor over here. We've got some things, spot awards here. Well, that's happening. Some people have now got this informal recognition things happening by the intranet group over there. Then we've got our insurance carrier coming over with the benefits department saying we should have a health and wellness program. And then depending on which your company is, you might have, you know, a safety program over here. It's You want a handbook just for the sort of programs that have been created over time for the employees. No, no, no wonder some of them have lackluster performances. You know, the resources are being separated and disjoint is not consolidated. But these are the areas and themes that this is what we should do. Bring them together, uh, incentivize and motivate around innovation, recognize that we've got a population that's 
brought up with Facebook that spends whatever percentage of time, but it's not watching the television or reading the newspaper anymore. They're in digitally, they're holding smartphones. The smartphones themselves have become mini computers. We also have interestingly a challenge that says on multi-generational populations where, you know, for each of you, depending on the size of your employed populations, you're dealing with 60 year olds to, you know, 25 year olds and within that spectrum, seems like generations seem to be happening more faster, but more quickly, but we all can recognize there are very distinct feelings of that 20 to 35 years and the 35 to 45 and the 45 to the 50s and then the 50s and plus, you know, so you've got to deal with that. And you also want to, you know, have your programs align with the branding of the organization. What does it mean to work for ABC company? You know, how am I supposed to perceive that? There's an external brand, there's an internal brand. So more and more companies are beginning to challenge themselves, say, you know, well, to bring these things together. For if we can bring them together, right, uh, and say, well, okay, from an employee's perspective, what do we really want? We want to want to be able to say, well, here are the objectives, you know, for for you, and these objectives align with the company's goals and values. Uh, here's how we're going to be able to measure those things: some qualitative. Right? So there's our spot awards, arbitrary uh, arbitrary award processes involving leadership and management, and then there's our uh, quantitative aspect, so they're data driven and everybody's got you know better more sophisticated HRI systems so we can measure a lot more and align with that and then we'll say great you know we want to recognize those employees who we've measured aligned and delivered the objectives and as a result of all that we've created this more positive experience what's this positive experience well the experience is supposed to be ultimately then when we all woke up this morning we said to work some of us said this sucks I hate this place. Others were ambivalent, right? I'm there today because I got a paycheck and others were enthused and were looking forward to the, seeing the people that they work with and participating on the projects that they've got and excited about where it was sort of going. So recognition ultimately with and considering the objectives, measurement methods, what are we going to recognize is ultimately trying to create an experience and if that experience is positive, rest assured the business outcomes will flow, you know? Those best places to work surveys, aligning with business outcomes, it's not just coincidental, right? Those companies that are good places to work, more often than not, will then yield better financial and business results. So here's some creative examples of how, you know, people have taken, you know, these concepts further, right? They've challenged themselves to say, Okay, well, we want engagement. How are we going to do it? Here's a big retailer, quarter of a million people, totally multi-generational, limited internal IT systems, not the most sophisticated, especially when you've got a thousand plus locations. Uh, dealing with people at all sorts of echelons, echelons meaning, you know, levels of education, levels of background, types of employees, and so forth. And here they've created a program that, you know, you'll notice here still has this concept of the celebration, the recognition of the uh, traditional things and birthdays and anniversaries. You don't have to throw it away. You just assess its value within the context. Brought in this concept of storytelling. Let's tell stories about our, our, empl our employees. Brought in some Facebook elements about, well, do you like these stories and can you interact with them? So see how they're multi-generational. You know, they've got the new generation stuff, the digital folks, you know, with the liking the stories, with the old, with birthdays and anniversaries and so forth. And then this concept of storytelling about recognizing people and what have they, you know, achieved without sort of disclosing specific results. Rest assured, a significant impact on engagement scores paralleling to uh, those stores and locations that had high levels of participation, uh, you know, in the program. And through that, what they get, increased retention rate, improved same store results with positive correlations between the most uh, active parts of the retail organization. And of course, that's having a financial you know, impact to the organization that is funding the program. So they, they sort of took their existing program budgets, combined them together and put it into a larger pool to make each of those programs more successful in and of themselves by bringing it together and delivering a financial result. So of course the organization is looking at HR and say, well done, that's excellent. Right. So there's the concept of 
engagement, a broad definition of multiple services coming into simultaneously. Taking a more specifics into certain areas, now we're looking at real true performance based. Okay? Concept of engagement amorphous, right? not exactly hard. Here's now, you know, hard stuff saying we want to grow, right? We want, irrespective of where you are in the organization, to feel that you're part of that growth. Now, when you look at it, an organization size and scale they are, right? and size and scale of some of the organizations that you know you folks are on the call, that might be hard if you were frontline, back office, process, sort of middle ma management, it says, Phil, how do you connect to that? So what you do is you say, well, you know, you can have a big goal, and that's the company's sort of overarching goals, but there are often uh, quantitative metrics that are happening departmentally, or by store, or by department, or by business unit, or by ward, etc., that you can then bring down to incorporate a performance metric. One just has to say, well, what are the performance metrics? Dollars are easy to point out, of course, but they are far more performance metrics from safety, attendance, quality, customer service, feedback. You're measuring these things. You've all invested you know, money and IT resources in terms of we want to be able to measure these sorts of things. How do you get executive leadership involved? Okay, so that was a big topic before, so I'll spend a minute on two, both from what we're seeing on the screen and then uh, segue to some other examples of how we've, they have it as a result of you know moving forward and go. So the first thing is you know management want data. Data makes us feel that we're you know doing better. You know usually the data reinforces what we're already sort of assuming, but data in this case can be used for a variety of things. The first thing is to say, well, we want to show and get executive leadership involved in the process. And if we can give them data points that's really easy for them to digest, like with a picture on screen that says, you know, this core value award is higher than the other one, then management doesn't need to think too long about what they're seeing because they've got a lot of other data points they're dealing with on a daily basis. So they can now act on it. Right. So what are the actions that one takes when one sees sort of information that's in a graphical representation? Good, I'm doing well, I should keep doing that. Bad, wow, uh, my business unit is the worst performing uh, business unit in the comparison against all the others that are my peers. I'm now guilted into better behavior. Three, depending upon the level of organizational leadership you can get involved in, case in point, I won't mention, but a particular insurance company client of us gets the CEO involved. CEO says, most important people, part of my organization is people. HR says, it's great, are we gonna increase their pay? No, well, we should probably you know, uh, think about some more creative ways to do this. How about some recognition uh, you know, aspects? And uh, you know, CEO says, great, that's a good idea. They get the CEO involved. The CEO gets now reports that show how all the business units are using the recognition programs underneath. The CEO has a monthly meeting and quickly says, hey, we all want to be using this. We're trying to try and get some parity. So the concept of getting management involved, depending on the culture and circumstance you've got, might take the approach that data and reports and visibility and transparency will be the best tool and vehicle for uh, driving greater participation and either they're inspired to do it, which is one thing that reports can do, be inspired, look how good this is doing, keep doing those kinds of things, producing good results. Or the inverse, which is to guilt those managers that aren't doing it all by making it more publicly visible. There's a there's another level that says, you know, so again, the data points saying you've got the reports, you've got the data, you've got much easier to consume data, you're presenting the data to management, and as a result, management is saying, right, well, clearly this is having an impact. You know, we can see this, and maybe we can see how recognition parallels, if we want to get a different data source, to turnover rates per business unit. So there'd be no difficulty in putting underneath the award level by business unit a second type of variable that says, and here's the turnover rate, and or depending upon your uh, survey vendor, there's a couple of vendors that we've worked very closely with whereby a question in the survey speaks specifically to, do you feel appreciated? Do you feel recognized? And that data can then be fed into a reporting dashboard like that, that would show executive leadership that says, look, isn't this really interesting? We saw positive correlations. 
positive correlations impacting a real outcome such as tenure and turnover, right? And further that there can be a, a feedback question encompassed into the surveys, whether they be you know quick surveys or the annual surveys, that then associate that data back to, aha, uh -huh, there's not much recognition, it shows it in the data from the survey, and it's also showing in terms of utilization of the program. So there's another way that you can also approach uh, management getting involved, and I'm going to use this uh, screenshot as a way to, uh, you know, exemplify and tell you an, un an unexpected outcome. I'll put it that way. So, firstly, what we're seeing here on this screen is a restaurant chain again, over 100,000 employees. You don't have to be big; these just happen to be large organisations. Also, very different uh, types of workforce in terms of generationally, limited access to technology, depending upon the locations themselves. Nonetheless, they've created this, you know, program. Uh, they're talking about aligning the values inside the program, bring it all together. But what becomes interesting here as it pertains to management buy and involvement is the program logic says uh, managers and leadership aren't the only people who can contribute and recognize others. And it's okay to have employees recognize each other's, and in fact, in many circumstances, business otherwise. Uh, employees are going to be the ones that are going to actually observe the behaviors and have maybe more likely than not either the capacity or the sort of mental space saying, you know, this worked with Jim on this and it's a difficult customer situation or they solved a difficult problem or they worked over time or they did an excellent job, whatever the case may be. Through the process, it says notify the manager or involve the manager or should this go to the manager or should it be considered by the manager for some special award. What we've seen in client programs that are incorporating that type of stepped approach is the number of manager, uh, let's just say, approved, uh, what we call them nominations or recommendations or awards or recognitions, increases by a multiple, not like a percentage factor, but a multiple, two to three times. Right? So, Case in point, make sure everybody's understanding the data points, saying you may have gotten 100 or 200 manager spot awards in a given year for a given part of the business. But once you bring in an employee ability to submit a nomination for a manager and do so in the right way, and you've got to execute it correctly because the quality of the execution has a big impact on the overall success of any given program, but assuming you're doing it right and well, then you might find for the same number of uh, awards, three to 400 manager initiated spot awards because the managers are no longer having to spend the time to think about the recognition activity. And given that we all know that there's a certain amount of work and overhead managers got to do, and they're not all built personality wise or otherwise to do great at recognition, the fact that the employees are pushing in the recognitions that the managers are then looking at and going, and, you know, again, email notification saying Michael Levy was recognized by Bob Nelson for doing excellence on a particular webinar presentation to a group of HR leaders. My manager, Kristen Brand, gets that and goes, wow, that was a great thing that you did and I'm really impressed by it. How much easier is that is the real question. So a way to build involvement, engagement is, is let the program come from underneath and sort of push it up into executive leadership. So you might find that that's a good way in terms of how you're looking at your own programs to say, well, if I sort of want them to get involved, I can try and push it down from the top, right? By talking to them about it and trying to get to the next level and presenting data that says, hey, executive leadership team, you need to focus on this particular thing. It's a very cheap and effective way to get, uh, you know, a result, right? And here's reports to support that and data and visibility. And the other way, either in addition, which of course we'd suggest, is have it as a ground roots program that pushes up into the organization and it forces management to do things. So for instance, if again that recognition that Bob had submitted to me, you know, Kristen doesn't act on it over a period of two weeks, what the system might do in one of our client's cases is this system will say, well, Kristen's obviously not paying attention to this, so I'm automatically going to send this recommendation up to Kristen's boss and elevate it up a level. So then Kristen's boss gets the nomination to say, Mike, Bob Nelson, Michael Levy, da-da-da, Kristen kind of missed it. She must have been busy. So I'm now sending it up to you for consideration. 
So there's many ways in which to approach depending on the circumstance of what you're facing and how to get management by. So here you're seeing you know, a slide that's telling the story that says you really want to bring all these programs together, performance elements, sales elements, if you want to inc incorporate innovation, drive that. Employee referrals, we're seeing a lot more because we all know the cost of talent acquisition very expensive. And more often than not, when you get people referring others, you can often find the quality of those referrals being at a level, of course, you know, it plays out according to their employee lifespan with the organization. Wellness now very being popular. Diversity being something that's, uh, an, you know, an important attribute depending on the organization and safety and tenure. Work these together, consolidate the budget. Often you can either reduce the total program expenditure, but you can certainly increase the relative performance. Here's an example, apologize a bit too quick. Here's an example of direct innovation approach where in conjunction with, and you can see it here, the recognition activities, they're also incorporating a referral. In this case, it's actual referral for business or employees. You know, do you have people that you know that you think might be good customers for us? Or do you have other people that you know who might be good employees here? Incorporating then and they're incorporating an ideas and suggestions box. So this is where instead of having again a separate ideas submission program and a separate program for employees and a separate program for this and a separate one for that, you know, you're seeing them come to life and bring them all together. They should look and feel applicable and appropriate in the world of the Facebooks, you know, meaning that these sites should feel a little similar to some of the popular social media sites that are out there. They, uh, they, the employee populations, particularly the younger generations, but also the older generations, significant percentage of those participate in Facebook. They should feel a little bit like that. Right? Just your own private label versions of them. You don't want it as Facebook. You don't want the information to be public. Right? It's not for that. It's for your own family, your own family being your employee population. But it should feel a little similar uh, to it. Here's a client that's looking at a definite multi-generational uh, situation where you've got the traditional success stories or employee of the month all the way through to setting departmental level targets and they still have and incorporate the anniversary concept in, in a form of calendar. Uh, so the summary is what we're seeing people do in terms of our client base and others beyond just online rewards. Uh, begin to challenge themselves to say these shouldn't be separate programs. These should form one holistic view of what non-cash compensation rewards and recognition means, whether you do that in one go, you don't need to do that in one go, that becomes difficult. You find the appropriate time and stage to begin with an initiative and whether that be around a performance attribute or a recognition attribute or a wellness attribute and then over time from an HR visionary perspective, you begin to lay programs and combine programs together. So I'll pass it back to you, uh, Kristen. Thanks everybody for the time and opportunity. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Bob and Jim. Um, uh, I, I, there was a lot of very interesting information that came out of the polls. Uh, uh, people are very interested in uh, getting executive leadership on board. Um, I wanted to open it up for questions, although I don't actually see the questions. So Jim, can you help out with that? Do you see, if you see any questions online, can you go ahead and chime in? Um, I know that there was one question, which Michael, you kind of addressed already, um, related to management. And uh, basically that, let me pull it up real quick. Um, Jane asks, how do I get buy-in from upper management? Um, to start a recognition program. Right now she spends her own money buying small items to recognize people that go above and beyond and she wished she could do more but can't. I know this is something that online rewards that we help companies identify areas where they can consolidate programs. We help them determine uh, justification for consolidation and moving towards a recognition program. Uh, we help uh, with competitive analysis and, and showing uh, return on investment. 
but I think it might be helpful for uh, for you to delve maybe a little bit more deeply in detail on this for Jane. Let me take a shot at that because I, I think and, and Michael was dead on when he was talking about uh, you got you've got to show the the results and you got to speak in business terms. If it, if you can make a business case for the topic you can have the conversation with upper management. So if you're currently doing some things and you're spending your own money, uh, and that's, that's uh, above and beyond, of course, and that's very nice, but, but um, you guys show the results you got and, that, and have that lead the question that we can get more results if we have uh, more of a program around this. And, and then at that point, maybe it's not just uh, if you were out buying Starbucks gift cards, that's nice, but what about the people that don't drink coffee or don't want to do that? Uh, do we have anything for them? And that's where you start to get uh, uh, diversity here. And again, you, you open up the ability to do things that will match the needs of employees. So, so start with what employees most want, uh, and then as you give them those things and you get the results, and you can show the performance, and you have the metrics, uh, you can take that back to management. That being said, I, I do find that uh, there's there's always a little bit of a leap of faith as well. So you can have the analytics and, and show the ROI and the return, uh, but there's often there's still got to be a, a little bit of leap of faith on part of upper management of saying, do we want to do this or not? And at that point, you know, if you have any any personal um, sway with them, call in a favor and ask them to can we do, can we do a pilot? Can we try it? Can we try it for a, a quarter? Um, and and uh, go that route uh, again, tracking uh, the success you've had along the way. There, there's right. a number of uh, different strategies that I've seen work very well, and so there's not any one answer that will get you there. But those are the, the, the types of things that come up most frequently. Okay, we have another question from Linda. Uh, she says, "Have you determined different methods for baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y? They are all desiring dif different methods of recognition." I know both of you can speak to this. Who wants to take it? So I'll answer it first, just very briefly, and then Bob, you can uh, you know chime in. The beauty of the, the the technological age that we live in is all those things can be done and accommodated in a manner that's cost effective and consistent. So printable award certificates, things that can be displayed at meetings, can be part of the same program framework as something that is mobile-based, that has notifications with an online recognition and registration form. So behind it, behind it, it the program will be a piece of software and technology likely to exist and reside on the web. And from that, you will say, how does the young people participate in the program and access it? And how do the older people participate and access it? And can the program do them all? And the answer is yes, they can do them all. The Macy's illustration with a quarter of a million users covering every age group was an example of where, again, we didn't see it today, but happy to share in further detail subsequent. A specific mechanisms all built into the same framework to appeal for all generations. Bob, you, you had an example related to that with millennials and how they really like to um, put a lot of their time and energy and effort towards charities and, and groups like that. Can you? 88% of millennials uh, donate to charities. Um, and in fact, uh, e a similar e equal measure, almost 80% of millennials say that money is not the most important thing to them at work. So uh, if you open it up to, uh, and what is most important at <laughs> top of the list, uh, is uh, being recognized, being thanked, having a personal connection with the person they report to, feeling, uh, and maybe we all, we all want this, feeling respected and feeling important and, and what we're doing makes a difference in, in life. And, and for them, that's, uh, if, if we all had some of that, the, the millennials are still holding on to it. <laughs> they want to make a difference and they want to make that difference where they're spending the bulk of their waking hours. So speak to those things. Uh, but let me, let me just say one other thing, because we can cut we this along minute, generations. Bob. We can cut this along generations. We can cut it around culture. We can cut it around uh, other tox topics as well. But ultimately, it comes down to finding out from your people, whoever they are, wherever they are, whatever level they're at, whatever they're doing, what things they value, what motivates people, motivates them. And, and so instead of trying to guess or s summarize the entire generation by a, a couple points, just ask your your people, and you're going to find it's going to it will vary widely. And then look to make that uh, take that seriously 
around the performance that they do. That's going to be the, the end game. Okay. Um, th thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, and thank you to all the participants. There are a couple of questions that uh, we didn't get time to answer. We will try to follow up offline. Um, and also, just so you all know, we'll be sending the books out within the next few weeks. And we were very happy to present this webinar for you. Thank you all and have a great day.